a question that's uh, two questions that are on the mind of every skyscraper fanatic today uh, is what are the what is the official height of the Burj Dubai and when will the building open and sure. what, is, what is your answer today? Well, I think we can comfort, comfort them and tell them that, you know, it is above 800 meters, which is about 2,400 feet in height, a little, a little more than that. That's, I guess, that gives them a, an idea of how far the building, you know, how high the building is. And uh, we are opening in early December, so probably first week of December is, is when we open uh, the Burj. But people must keep in mind that for us to move 800 of our staff into the building and, and, and kind of take over the building, we'll be taking the building over the building in stages that could take us, you know, four or five months to really kind of control the building in total. But the building is indeed at its full height now, is it not? Of course, it's at uh, full height. In fact, um, a lot of the stuff, you know, we just, a um, few touches on the building, really what we are doing uh, now, but, but, you know, when you take delivery of this building, you, know, you probably have to go through 12 months of tweaking and adjusting and, you know, but people are be, will be moving in their, in their homes, uh, you know, in the coming few months. A lot of people are looking at all of the renderings coming out of Dubai and all of the things that, that you have planned. Uh, and it's an incredible concept for a city, but a lot of people are also wondering who is going to live there and what your vision is for the future mm -hmm. of Dubai. Who, who are the people who will be occupying this? I mean, I don't know about the other developers, but at least if you, if you talk to me, is that, you know, this is a city that serves at least 1.5 billion people. But if I were to look at the Middle East, Arabia only, 300 million people. And these 300 million people are equivalent population size to the USA. And USA has Chicago, New York, San Francisco, Washington DC, Miami, Los Angeles as, as big hubs for, to serve the 300 million people. Why the Middle East have only one city to serve these 300 million people. So the number of people from the Middle East who move into the city of Dubai uh, is three times the number of people who move into Chicago, um, say Miami, state of, state of Florida every year. So we have about between 300 to 400,000 people who move on an annual basis in the city because it's a city that's uh, good for business in, in all sectors. You know, if it's really transportation, tourism, uh, retail, uh, technology, healthcare, education, trading, uh, and that's really the, uh, the power of growth with, um, for the city. Who is moving to Dubai today, and is there ever going to be a time when you're expecting a, a large uh, influx of residents, or is that going to be kind of a gradual thing? Well, it has been going on for the past 25 years. Uh, it has been going on, uh, people moving in from, from the Arab countries into, into this service hub, and I think it will continue. A lot of buildings over the years have made the claim about being, you know, a vertical city of some kind or another. But uh, reading over your notes, am I right in thinking that this is going to be home to 100,000 people, the Burj Dubai? Is that right? I mean, the, not the building itself. The building will probably house about 3,500 people. But if you look at our total master plan, the 500 acres where the Burj stands, it will be 100,000 people, yes. Okay, so the actual occupancy of the building is going to be 3,500. Around about between uh, 3,200 to about 3,500, yes. Okay, and that is full-time residents and office workers and hotel guests, is that right? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, the benefits of the building, what, what has construction of this building done for Dubai over the last few years? Well, of course, you know, the building, uh, such a building, it's challenging uh, in, in every area. Engineering was a challenge and learning. Uh, mechanical, electrical was a challenge uh, and learning. So the amount of uh, knowledge that uh, been gained for uh, our company, for our staff, for the city, for the city planners, for the engineers, for the contractors in the city, for the material suppliers in the city, if you were to think about it, just, just for you to push concrete at, to such height. Okay. Of course, if you look at the city, um, it's challenging in all areas. And that challenge gave a great opportunity for learning. If it's really for our city planners, have to, have to learn how to deal with this building. If it's for our engineers, for our marketing people, uh, for structural people, for the subcontractors, contractors in the city, for the glass suppliers, for the concrete suppliers. I think the idea of pushing concrete to such extreme height and keeping, keeping temperature and quality and, and makeup, uh, chemical makeup uh, still good for the building at such height was such great learning. So I would say that the whole industry, uh, all people involved, the city, uh, it was a great learning for all of them. 
I was going to ask you about the evolution of the design of this building because uh, I've read that this was first designed as a 90-story building. Uh, what were the factors, what were the original designs like, and what was it that pushed this building so high? At the beginning, it was mainly uh, really height, uh, but the 90-story building was a different design. It was not this building. Uh, so the city wanted a true landmark, a global landmark that really you know, can stand uh, the test of the global scene. Uh, and that's why uh, we were pushed by His Highness to design something that's uh, much, much higher than, than uh, what is being built in Chicago or in New York or in Shanghai. But what's really interesting is it seemed like um, you were always asking the designers to go a little bit more, a little bit sure. more, and this, and this kind of evolved over time. Yeah. And what that was a continuous desire just to go taller yes. and taller. What, yes. How did your expectations your, or your desires shift yeah. as this project went forward? Well, of course, you know, a project like this, uh, you can push for a building to be higher and higher, but there is uh, element of cost that you have to keep in mind. There is uh, market uh, conditions. Uh, of course, uh, the building have to look good because you, you do design the building, but if you keep pushing it higher and higher, beside the structural issues and so forth, and wind engineering, but, but the building have to look symmetrical. So my condition was that we push higher, but the building have to look right. And I think we got to the height that we like, keeping in mind engineering, structural, and uh, the design of the building. Are you surprised that there are already buildings being talked about and worked on, for that matter, construction projects for something taller than this? No, not at all. I, I knew that there will be people, because that's human nature. You know, we'll push the boundaries and we move forward. So no, I welcome it. I think it's, it's, it's good for the business, I think it's good for the human mind, I think it's, it's challenging for all of us. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we'd like to be the, the tallest for a long time, but I think more important than height, we really would like to be known that it's a slick, well-designed, well-built building with incredible uh, quality of construction uh, for as long as we can. That's one. Second, you know, we also want to be that we are, we've done something very special that we've taken 500 acres and we've done a master plan development where we've got almost 55 buildings built around this wonderful uh, tower that adds so much value to everything around it instead of just taking a 100,000 site in downtown New York or Los Angeles or Beijing and just pulling this tall building. I think it's much more than that. You see buildings going up all over the world in Shanghai and various places that you clearly would not see on say an American skyline just because they really reflect the culture of their host cities. How does the Burj Dubai reflect the culture and the, and, and the aspirations of, of Dubai? Well, as I said, I know there'll be people who will be doing a wonderful work uh, like us, but I can't, see, I can't see anybody having 500 acres and doing everything from, from the amusement parks to the lakes to the roads to the hotels, the Burj itself, uh, entertainment. So um, I'm just saying that, you know, I mean, we, we have over 300 food outlets around the Burj. I mean, we have, so, so I, it's difficult for me to see something in the near future where somebody can build a master plan development where the bur Burj is, is, is the icon and everything else is, is around it. Even, in, I mean, I'm familiar with China and Shanghai, but you know, you have, you have wonderful development and you've got the building sticking out on its own with no control of what's going on around it. But the way the building says this is Dubai, uh, the, the statement you get that this is Shanghai is, is much different than, sure. you know, this is Chicago. Uh, and what about the building says this is, this is Dubai? Is it the, is it the design? Is it the, the cutting edge technology that's, that's used? What statement are you making? Well, of course, all of, all of what you mentioned, but what's most important is that I think that this, the city is also telling the world that, that I'm part of you. That, you know, I, uh, I am a global city. Uh, I participate in the global growth. And I, you know, I inspire uh, my society and my people uh, to be proud of, of who they are and their city. Giorgio Armani uh, was personally brought in to, uh, to work on the design of, of the hotel rooms there. Tell me about that whole experience. Well, um, it's, it's not only working on the hotel design, but you know, Giorgio Armani is uh, a person that's involved in designing the hotel and, and designing the spirit of the hotel, uh, where it's uh, you know, live with Armani type of atmosphere. 
So uh, he created the hotel environment, he created the design, the food outlets, and in fact, he created how to check in, where the hotel will not have any check-in desks, because that, that's what I like about George Armani, is that he's so innovative, not only in design, but in creating a complete spirit of the hotel. And right. it adds something special to the building.